Okay, so now nervous system, okay, nervous system. So what we're going to learn is under this subtopic, eh, nervous system. So what are the learning outcomes? So first of all, we're going to look at this, the structure of sensory neurons compared to the motor neurons. So it means that you need to actually learn how to identify the sensory neurons as well as the motor neuron. And then we need to know that what is the roles or what are the roles of the sensory receptor cells okay, in detecting, detect what? We detect the stimuli and then stimulating the transmissions of the nerve impulses in the sensory neurons. Okay, and we're going to look at two different kinds of the sensory receptor cells later. Okay, and then third, we're going to describe the functions of the sensory relay and the motor neurons in a reflect arch. So relay neurons, not necessary, must be there. Uh, in our syllabus, we also call them as the intermediate neurons. Are you clear? So we have relay or intermediate neurons, okay? So either way, I mean, either you talk about relay or you put it as intermediate neurons, both acceptable, okay? So one, two, three will be our focus for today, uh, these uh, topics. And then tomorrow, we're going to look at this. Describe, explain the transmissions of an action potential in a myelinated neuron and initiation from a resting potential and then we need to focus in terms of sodium and potassium ions in the impulse transmissions. We need to actually know how the process takes place eh, between the sodium and also the potassium ions. Okay. And after that, when the transmissions, we're going to look at the importance of the myelin shift, which causes the saltatory conductions in determining the speeds of the nerve impulse. And we're going to look at another one called refractory period to determine the frequency. Okay, so we have two. One is the speed, another one is the frequency. Okay, uh, that will be most likely will be this uh, tomorrow and also the Thursday topics. Okay, and then next, again, we're going to describe the structure of the cholinergic synapse. Okay, so our because our synapses have different different form of synapses, but our topics will uh, focus on this cholinergic eh, synapse and explain how its function, including the role, highlights the calcium ions. So very very important the calcium ions. How this calcium ion actually involved in the nerve or this actual transmission or actual potential across the cholinergic synapse. Okay, and last we need to know what is the role of the synapse. Particularly, we want to allow, okay, only allow the transmission in one direction. So we don't want to have a reverse directions and allow the connections eh, between one neuron and many other neurons, okay? So those are the learning outcome we are going to talk about nervous system, okay? So we haven't done yet in terms of the nervous system, we have another subtopic we call neuromuscular junction, almost similar to the synapse. We're going to look at how the muscle contractions actually take place. Okay, so let us start with the structure of the neurons. So in many animal cells, particularly I should say that not all animal they have nervous system, not all, but the organism with the nervous system must be animal. So you know, right? Huh? Be careful when talk about this in the biodiversity, in the classifications, we do talk about this, right? You cannot claim that all animal, only some, some animal they have the nervous system but all organisms that have nervous system must be animal okay uh? so this is a special characteristics okay so in many animals the neurons that carry out the integrations okay and are organized in the central nervous system i always say that central nervous system so what's central nervous system is the integration center to evaluate our input so it consists of what the nervous system here consists of our brain as well as our spinal cord, okay? Our brain and the spinal cord, okay? The neurons that carry the information into and out of the central nervous system, we term it as peripheral nervous system. Like for example, the, the neurons that bring in the information, okay? But I, the neurons, sensory neurons, the motor neurons that bring the output 
to the muscle, to the glands. Those are termed as the peripheral nervous system. So in terms of neurons, so neuron is a basic unit of a nervous system. So it's a basic functional unit of our nervous system. So it's the nerve cell that carry the electrical impulses termed as action potential. Okay, so we have three types of the neurons based on their activities. Okay, based on their functions and activities. So they can be either sensory neurons intermediate neurons or motor neurons. So we have three. So intermediate neuron also known as the relay or connector neurons. Okay, so normally we use the term sensory neuron, intermediate neurons, motor neurons. For intermediate neurons, you can actually use another term called relay neurons. So let us look at the shape and the structure. So we start with the sensory neuron. So sensory neurons are a bit special. You can see that the neurons have this, what we call the cell body. The cell body actually adds the intermediate of the neuron. It's not at the one end. It's at, not at the center also, but in middle, okay? In, in between, okay? In between okay? the two end. Can you see that? In between two end. So in this case, you can see that here is a skin receptor, means that this is how the nerve impulses will be, or uh, the actual potential will be generated. So it will travel along. Can you see that? So the nerve impulses or this actual potential will travel in the directions first towards the cell body, and then from the cell body towards the end here. So the one that bring, okay, the, the part of the neuron that bring the actual potential to the cell body is termed as dendrons. Are you clear? So please uh, change this one. It's not dendrite. It's termed as dendron. Okay. I will tell you more about dendron and dendron. Actually, they are interchangeable, but for our syllabus, we need to differentiate them. Okay. Between dendrons and dendrites. Okay. Then the actual potential travel from the sub body to the end. So the parts that carry the actual potential away from the cell body is termed as exon. Okay, A X O N the exon. Okay, so we have dendron and exon. Can you see that? So, if you talk about this, you realize that sensory neurons will have one long dendron. Are you clear? Can you see that one long dendron and a little bit shorter exon? Okay, long dendron and short exon, okay? But if you compare to the motor neuron, motor neuron, you realize that the cell body actually located at one end. Can you see that? The cell body located at one end. So they don't have a um, uh, dendron, the long dendron, but they have many, many these small uh, projections here. Can you see that? The cytoplasm projection, which term as dendrite. So what's the difference between dendrites and dendron? Dendron means one, main long one we call as a dendron, but the tiny, tiny one here we call as a dendrite. Can you see that? So motor neurons will have many, many dendrites, but they don't have long dendron. So dendrite bring the action potential, can you see that, to the cell body. So dendrite and dendron, both of them, they have the same functions they carry or they bring or they transmit the actual potential towards the cell body. This is the cell body. Cell body is where the nucleus will be located. And, okay. Then after that, from the cell body, the actual potential going to travel. Can you see that? Away. So the parts that transmit or conduct the actual potential away. Can you see that? Away from the cell body is term X, a term as exon, okay, exon. So for motor neuron, you can see that they have a very long exon, a long exon compared to the sensory neuron, which have short exon. So this is how we differentiate them. So later I will draw a diagram, okay, to show to you guys why the dendron is longer in the sensory neurons, why the motor neuron will have a long 
axon. It depends on the position where the cell body located. Okay. And then how about intermediate neuron? Intermediate neurons, you have a different, different shape, but mainly you can see that they will have a, a very short axon. Okay, there are many dendrites and also the cell body. And one of the features here, you can see that they have a lot, a lot of this called synaptic end here. Okay, a lot of synaptic end, but the axon relatively shorter. Okay. So in terms of positions, okay, where we can find the sensory neurons, motor neurons, and intermediate neurons. So generally, we look at the cell body. So for sensory neuron, the cell body located inside the dorsal roots of ganglia. I will show you later. Intermediate neurons were inside the spinal cords of the brain. Motor neurons will be inside, okay, within the spinal cord or the central nervous system. What is the function of sensory neuron? Basically, they transmit the action potential from the receptor to the central nervous system. And then intermediate neuron will act as integration center in the central nervous system, connect the sensory neurons to the motor neuron. And motor neuron will transmit the action potential from the central nervous system, either of our brain or spinal cord, to the effector, for example, the muscle and the glands. Okay? So now we look at what is why the structure different. Okay, now we look, we have to consider okay, a reflect arch, a simple reflect arch here. Okay, so let's say this is our hand, the finger. Okay, then this is our spinal cord. Okay, not according to the scale, yeah. Okay, so spinal cord. Okay, and then let's say this is the muscle cell. Okay, yeah? it's not according to the scale. So this is the dorsal root of ganglia. Okay, singular ganglia. Okay, dorsal root of ganglia. Now, what actually happened here is, let's say you touch on a hot surface. So your receptor will pick up the stimulus and then your sensory neurons will be here, sensory neurons. So these sensory neurons will, try, they will go all the way into our central nervous system, which is the spinal cord. Are you clear? And they start to sign it. Are you clear? So where's the cell body? Cell body will be in between, okay, in between of two ends. Can you see that? So where the cell body can be located, you can see the cell body located at the dorsal root of ganglion. So therefore, if I label them, you can see that this is a dendron. So the dendron will be longer, can you see that, compared to the axon. Do you realize that? Dendron longer. So where is the cell body? Cell body actually located at the dorsal root of ganglia. So it's very long cells. Can you see that? It's very, very long cells. It starts from fingertips all the way to the spinal cord. Okay? So now, what is the next? The next one is the intermediate neurons. So we can see the intermediate neurons. Okay, let's do like star shape like this. So they have this tiny, tiny, okay, then dry. Can you see that the dendrites? So this is the intermediate neuron. Okay, the red color is the sensory neuron. So what is the function of sensory neuron in this case? So sensory neurons are going to transmit the action potential from the receptor all the way to the central nervous system. Spinal cord is part of our central nervous system. Okay, so where is the cell body? Now you can see that the cell body actually located at the central nervous system for the intermediate neuron. Okay, so the last one, you can see that's our motor neurons. So motor neurons, okay, this is a cell body of the motor neuron. So motor neuron actually synapse with the... You can see that? Oh, sorry, my mistake here. 
uh, the wrong drawing. See that? Synapse. So synapse is who? Synapse with the intermediate neuron. So this is a cell body. Okay, the cell body. So you can see that they have very short dendrite. But many, they have many, many dendrites. So short dendrites. And this, can you see that? The connections here all the way to our muscle. You can see all the way to the muscle. So this is a axon of the motor neurons. The blue color is a motor neuron. So how do we differentiate between two of them? Sensory neurons and motor neurons? Sensory neurons will have a long dendron. So the dendron will be longer compared to the axon. And where we can find the cell body? The cell body actually located at the dorsal roots of ganglions. And then intermediate neuron, you can see that entire neuron actually located inside the spinal cord. Okay, or the brain. So it means that they are inside the central nervous system. Okay, so their axon and dendron, okay, axon and dendrites, they are both very, very short, okay, in the intermediate neurons or relay neuron. But motor neurons, they are very, very short dendrites and many, many dendrites. And the cell body of the motor neurons is located inside the central nervous system. And then the axon, they have one long axon and then synapse with the, can you see that? Synapse with the muscle at the neuromuscular junction to cause our muscle to contract. So this is a simple reflect arch. Can you see that? Simple reflect arch. So I want to repeat here what you need to know, basically how to differentiate between the sensory neurons and also the motor neuron. So sensory neuron, how you differentiate it first, based on the cell body. Can you see that the cell body at in-between of two ends? Okay, two ends there. So we can see that dendrons longer, axon shorter. And then for the motor neuron, you can see that the cell body located at the central nervous system, particularly in the spinal cord. And they have many, many short dendrites. Okay, and then we can have a one right, for motor neurons, they have one long axon, okay, which synapse with the muscle or the glands. Okay, yeah? so the, tra the transmission or the action potential, you can see that, okay, follow the arrow. Then you realize that the action potential actually move inside the dendron toward the cell body and then transmit okay, along this action potential out or away from the cell body through these axons. Are you clear? And then synapse, you can see that the dendrites carry the action potential to the cell body. And then in the axon, the action potential now is transmitted along the axon, means that they carry away the action potential from the cell body. So cell body is where the nucleus can be found, okay? So now we zoom in, okay? We zoom in into more detailed structure of a typical neuron. So we can use a motor neuron as our study here, okay? So a typical, okay, uh, motor neurons, okay? A structure of neurons that consists of the cell body, okay? Dendrite or dendrons, as well as the ex okay, axons here. So you look at figure 19.1. This is a motor neuron, so okay, very quick one, you can see that this is a motor neuron because they have many, many dendrites. And this is a cell body where the nucleus at one end, can you see that with the nucleus? And then they have a long, one long axons and then terminal here. So what are the structure that we need to learn here is, first, we need to know what is the difference between, what are the differences between dendrites or dendron and the axon, dendron, axons. Yes, first thing. So cell body, what is the function of the cell body and the structure? And then you can see that the axons of the motor neuron normally cover by, or by one, cells, one type of cell called Schwann cell. Can you see that? The Schwann cell. So what Schwann cell can do? Schwann cell actually cover or wrap around the axon at a regular interval, forming a gap in between of them. So 
This one we call them as a node of Renville. Okay, so the red thing here forming what we call the myelin sheath. Are you clear? It's a myelin sheath. So who formed the myelin sheath? The Swan cell that wrap around the axon. So leaving the node of Renville. So by having this structure, what will happen here is it going to, okay, it's going to increase the speeds of the transmissions of the action potential. Are you clear? We're going to learn this one later or, or, or maybe tomorrow when you look at how the action potential can be traveled along this node of Renville. Okay, move towards, okay. So we look at the structure one by one. So first we talk about the cell body. So cell body is where we can get the nucleus located. So it's a, they have a cytoplasm, have high number of mitochondria because we need the ATP for the actual potential transmissions and the generation of actual potential as well. Endoplasmic reticular Golgi apparatus as well as the ribosome. So they, uh, for the motor neuron, you can see that they have many, many thin cytoplasmic processes or projection. In this case extends from the cell body because they are tiny ones, so known as dendrites, okay, dendrites. So dendrites, what's the function of dendrites? So function of dendrite actually conduct actual potential towards the cell body, okay? So this is the definition of dendrites or dendrons. So basically dendrite of motor neurons are relatively short and many, but sensory neurons have one long dendrons, okay? I, I, uh, I don't see dendrons, okay, can you see that? How about exon? Exon conduct the action potential away from the cell body. So within the cytoplasm, the exon or called exoplasm, you have a lot of this endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, as well as the mitochondria because we need the ATP. So in terms of motor neurons, they have only one long exon. Exon sensory neurons are normally shorter compared to the dendron. And the terminal branches of the axon end in the knob-like structure known as a synaptic knob. So what's the synaptic knob? Can you see that? At the end here, you see something like a bulb. Can you see that the bulb structure at the terminal branches? So we do have this synaptic knob. Synaptic knob actually contains a neurotransmitter that can actually allow the action potential to transmit, okay, to cross the cleft from one neuron to another neuron, okay? We're going to learn this one in synapse, okay? So what's the functions of the synaptic knob? Synaptic knob actually contains many vesicles filled with the transmitter substances or known as the neurotransmitter. And we do have this myelin sheath, okay? What's the function of myelin sheath? So in the myelinated neuron, the axon are covered by a fatty myelin sheath formed by the Swan cells. So this Swan cell is going to wrap around the axon at a regular interval leaving the gap in between, and this gap is known as the node of Renville. It's a small uncovered part of myelinated axon between the Swan cells. So this gap allowed the transmission of the action potential, so increase the speed of the transmissions. Okay. So you can see that the myelin, okay? Myelin is made when the Swan cell wrap themselves around the axon along its length. So you can see that this is the axon. So Swan cells start to wrap and then form a layer by layer. You can see that and form this myelin sheath. You can see that the myelin sheath formed by the Swan cells. So the entire thing calls, okay, can I see the Swan cells? There is the Swan cell nucleus. So this Swan cell that you wrap around it form layer by layer. So this layer called myelin sheath. Okay, uh, so the gap in between, the gap in between the Swan cells, actually we term as the node of Renville. Eh? So the small, uncovered area or axon between the Swan cell known as the node of Renville. 